As Asia reopens, you're going to see a lot more people going to Southeast Asia to take advantage of the great lifestyle, the low or zero tax rates, and the very international environment. Today, I'm going to break down the five best places to live if you're an entrepreneur or investor looking to move to Southeast Asia. <music> So the criteria that I'm using here is as a lifelong entrepreneur and an investor who is on Google Meets calls, who is talking to a team, who is traveling for work, who wants a certain standard of living, who wants certain amenities, uh, and who needs people to get around. So those are the standards that I'm talking about today. Uh, so we're not going to be talking about some of the further flung cities, some of the smaller places, some of the more rural or rustic or up and coming places, because I just don't think for a lot of entrepreneurs and investors you want to go there. So the five places we're going to talk about, you've probably heard of. I'm going to make the case for why they're in the top five. And if it's your first time here, I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. That includes you want to move to Southeast Asia, dramatically reduce your tax rate, reduce your cost of living, and have a lot more fun in your life. We help people reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets, get a second passport. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And so, uh, I live in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, part of the year. That is, for me, the best place to live. And you might say, well, why not Singapore? So let me get that out of the way. Uh, we have had from you know, people just starting businesses all the way up to multi nine figure entrepreneurs say, hey, I love the idea of living in Singapore, but it just seems like the juice isn't worth the squeeze. If you follow my Global Citizen Sandwich, you can bank in Singapore, you can manage your investments from Singapore. We've helped a lot of people do that. Great place to do that. And I think it's a lot more zippy and efficient than doing that in Switzerland. So if you want to live in Asia, why not manage your assets from there? Uh, but the process of the amount of time you need to live there if you're an entrepreneur that delays potentially in bringing your family, they're raising the requirements in Singapore, um, you need to put in a lot of money. It's just everything put together. Again, even if you have a quarter of a billion dollars, I've had people like, eh, you know what? Let me just keep Dubai in my back pocket. And, and hey, let me maybe go to Thailand or let me set something else up. But Singapore, great place, but just hasn't really, unless you just really want to go all in, you're going to have a low tax residence. Um, they are talking about some new taxes. Um, but you are going to pay some taxes if you're starting a business. I mean, it's just, it's not, it doesn't tick all the boxes, okay? And so for me, Kuala Lumpur does that. You can get into Malaysia on uh, an MM2H, whether it's in the mainland or the Sarawak MM2H, if you're willing to spend a little bit of time in Sarawak on Borneo. Uh, so if you have some cash to put in the bank and you're willing to spend some time in Malaysia, then MM2H is a good route. If you want to start your company in Lab 1 or move your company to Lab 1, you can pay a single digit rate of tax. You can get it in Malaysia that way with a few conditions. There's also some other visas that you can get, although uh, those are, are sometimes changing and a little bit more difficult. So if you're just starting out, maybe Lab 1 is a good route. Otherwise, you can look at the MM2H programs. I think Kuala Lumpur, one of the most connected cities in Asia. I love the culture, love the people. Very affordable housing compared to, let's say, Bangkok. If you wanted to buy property, if you're a little bit more established, uh, you can pay one third to a quarter in equally good locations for equally good quality because you have so much supply. I'm not saying it's a great investment, I'm saying it's a great way to own your property, control that as you're traveling around the world, and you can live uh, and enjoy Malaysia's excellent tax system. And so if you're spending your entire year in Malaysia, you're going to have access to a very international place, English speaking, multicultural, all the different kinds of foods you want, well connected by air, right next door to Singapore, easy enough to get in through immigration, and uh, very friendly tax regime. We've talked about that and how there were allegedly going to be some changes. They're not making changes, and even if they would have made the changes, it really wouldn't have affected you at least very much. What I look at when it comes to Southeast Asia is big cities, that's Kuala Lumpur. I also look at beach places, and so if you want more of a beach vibe, Penang is a uh, large city in Malaysia. You've got plenty of services, not as many services in KL, but we have a lot of Australians, for example, who want to move to Penang. If you're used to being on the water, you don't have it in KL. I have a tendency to live in places where we're not on the water. Uh, that's my habit, it seems. Uh, but if you want to be in the water, Penang is available. So all the same immigration programs, all the same tax uh, advantages, a bit more of a, of a Chinese culture, although they are no longer the majority there. So you've got the Malays, the Chinese, and the Indians as the primary ethnic groups in Malaysia. And the Chinese were the majority group uh, up until recently. Uh, but you still have a lot of that influence. One of my favorite restaurants in the world, the Kabaya Dining Room is there. Take your friends. Uh, one of my favorite hotels in the world, which you probably wouldn't be staying at if you live there, but the Eno Hotel uh, is there. Uh, so great vibe. Seems a little bit more gritty. Um, and I think KL is a little bit more gritty than, let's say, Singapore, which I happen to think is a good level of grit. I don't want things to be too perfect in my own personal life. Um, but 
if you want to be on the water, you have not only the city, but you can kind of go out along the beaches all around the island. And so same benefits of living in Malaysia. I would make the same comparison next door in Bangkok uh, and in um, Phuket, Thailand. And so big city, uh, more beach vibes. So you kind of have Bangkok versus KL, uh, Penang versus Phuket. Everyone has their taste. Bangkok, less English speaking, but somehow also more international. Uh, when I was in Bangkok, I actually had a better time than I usually have recently. And I saw uh, and I really enjoyed some, some great international restaurants. So whether you want German cuisine, whether you want French, you're going to have a bit more of that in Bangkok than you will in KL. KL, you're going to have a lot of local food, Arabic food, um, a lot of different Italian food. Um, but it's going to be a bit more Asian in terms of just what people are looking for. You have a lot more international options in Bangkok. You've got a Taco Bell in Bangkok. So if you're like me and that's your one guilty pleasure from the U.S., then you might want to go to Bangkok. Uh, base it on around Taco Bell. Uh, you're going to pay more for housing. I think definitely the housing market in Bangkok is a little hot. Uh, and so do you, if you want to buy a property, that's going to be more challenging. The ways to get into Thailand, you've got a number of ways and they're rolling out more ways. For someone who just wants a passive way to get in, buy your way in with an Thai elite visa. We've covered that extensively. Or get a, one of the investor programs. So mid-six-figure investment could be in property, could be in uh, bonds, could be just throwing money in the bank. And so has some attributes similar to MM2H in Malaysia, but also gives you more optionality if you don't want to spend very much time there. If you just want to set it up for the future, uh, Thailand could work for you. And so generally in Malaysia and Thailand, if you're running your business somewhere else and you follow basic procedures, you're going to be uh, exempt from tax on income there. Keyword being uh, follow some procedures in terms of how you're bringing the money in to the country, especially in Thailand. So if you need money to live in Thailand, which you will, you're going to want to set up proper tax planning to make sure the money's coming in the proper way, whether it's through foreign debit cards and credit cards or whether you're actually bringing it into a Thai bank account. So you don't want to get stuck paying tax in Thailand if you don't have to. Uh, Malaysia is, is straightforward, but again, requires some planning. So you can essentially live in these places and very, pay very little tax. They're looking to bring in uh, high earners and they're looking to bring in people who have wealth. And so if you have a salary and you have some level of wealth or you're willing to start a company and build your wealth, um, then you can live in those two places. So Bangkok, a bit more expensive, much more of a New York vibe, by the way, than I think, I mean, anywhere in, in, in Southeast Asia, right? I mean, Hong Kong obviously has that kind of vibe, but uh, it has more of that vibe. You have a lot more kind of public transportation, although Kuala Lumpur is catching up. So it just has that kind of, you know, there's the subway, there's the, there's the uh, elevated train, there's the this. It has more of that New York vibe. Phuket, at one point, was the fastest growing place in Thailand. So if you want that island vibe, can't say it's been my place, but definitely a lot of people go there. And so you can enjoy that um, you know, more uh, beach lifestyle there. Uh, definitely better than something like Padia. Something like a Hua Hin comes up on the radar every once in a while. Probably not really just developed enough for what most entrepreneurs are looking for and a little bit less accessible. Phuket, I mean, you see flights uh, back to the Middle East, for example. I've seen people who've flown from Kuala Lumpur back to the Middle East through Phuket. And so you have good international connections there. And so Malaysia and Thailand, to me, are the best countries. Even if you can afford to go to Singapore, again, the juice isn't often worth the squeeze. And so um, what I'm le left with last is my fifth selection. I think this would probably be the one that I would look at after the first four would be Manila in the Philippines. So fewer immigration options now. But again, if you have some money to your name, you can get in through uh, residence. Not really an option to set up a company there and wouldn't want to, but same tax treatment. And if your company is somewhere else and you do proper tax planning, you can ostensibly pay nothing on that. Um, and so uh, Manila, I would say the place to be would be uh, in the fort, Bonifacio Global City. Uh, most of the time that I've been in Manila, I was in Makati, which is kind of the old place to be. And so you have some nice hotels, you have some nice malls, uh, but you know, Bonifacio was really the new place to be. And when I first went there, I'm like, this is almost like Singapore. Uh, I'm hearing more and more people tell me when they're going to various places in, in um, Southeast Asia, parts of the city really feel like Singapore. Someone even told me parts of Phnom Penh, Cambodia felt like Singapore. Not all of it, certainly, but a little part of it. And so uh, Bonifacio felt like that to me. And so uh, it would be last on my list. But I mean, Manila's airport has always been congested and kind of a pain to fly out of, in my opinion. It's a little bit off the, the radar. It's not nearly as connected as Malaysia and Thailand. And so if you're trying to do a lot of travel, especially if that travel is not back to the US, uh, then I think the airport is a disadvantage. Definitely English speaking helps. Very nice people, very helpful people. Um, and so if I was looking for friendliness, uh, I'd probably focus on Malaysia and the Philippines. Um, certainly over Bangkok, maybe not over everywhere in Thailand, but 
um, if you're looking for a more robust place to live in Thailand, certainly those places win. Uh, so Manila would be on the list. Where am I not going to go? Vietnam, nothing wrong with Vietnam. And I think a lot of people go there. I think that the lack of long-term stability in terms of immigration, a lot of people are there on shorter term permits or even tourist visas, they're extending stuff. Um, it's just not as efficient. If you start a business there, there are ways to get longer term residence permits. Um, it's just not as interesting. And I don't know that you want to go through those steps. I mean, unless you really, 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 really want to live in Vietnam. Uh, people have been very successful hiring there, but hey, live in Malaysia, live in Bangkok, uh, manage your staff from there, pop in every once in a while uh, as you can. Cambodia, I'm a big fan. Um, Phnom Penh, not really any more affordable than any of the rest of the places, and the quality of life just isn't there yet. So unless you want to watch a frontier market evolve in front of your very eyes, I don't think it's worth it. And if you don't want to do that, Take some vacations, stay at the Raffles Hotel, stay at any of the many, many places you can stay around BKK1 or anywhere in Phnom Penh and just watch it unfold on a one week vacation. Um, you know, Myanmar obviously is, is, is going to be out. Uh, Indonesia, I think, you know, again, lack of kind of long term tax friendly residences. Uh, Jakarta is an interesting city, probably a great city for social. Uh, but not a place where um, you're going to get anything done. I mean, driving around takes forever. Um, just not really as connected. Uh, Bali, I think, not a great place to run a big, big business. Um, place to run a lifestyle business, but not a place to run a big, big business. And so you go to the places where I mentioned, you're going to find successful people, both local successful people and some international successful people. And I think that's the kind of environment that you're looking for when you're moving. So those are my top five choices for ease of immigration, tax friendliness, quality of life, accessibility in Southeast Asia. Which one would you pick? Leave a comment below.